Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Arlington Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, November 10th, 2014. It's a little past 7.15, I do call this meeting to order. Um, I'd like to remind everyone that we are being filmed by ACMI, so please smile widely when you're at the microphone. And um, I would like to be, we'll begin with a proclamation for because November is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Um, Ter unfortunately, uh, the original sponsor, Terry Lavin, couldn't be with us tonight, but Janice Griffin and Mary Hayden are. So please come to the microphone. Hi. Um, on behalf of the Boston Affiliate Pancreatic Cancer Action Network and the citizens of Arlington who have lost their battle with pancreatic cancer, we thank you very, very much for this proclamation. And if I may, I would like to read our um, Pancreatic Cancer Action, um, the call for action response. We face a formidable enemy, one that takes 94% of its victims within five years. We have lost our best and our brightest, our family, our friends. But we will never lose our resolve. We know that we must, what we must do, wage hope. We are fighters. We were the first to step forward, and we will be the last one standing. We are always advancing, not merely on one front, but many. Research, advocacy, awareness, compassion. These are our weapons, and we will wield them with relentless purpose. We will lead the change. Wage hope. We are pioneers. We are explorers charting molecular frontiers discoverers unearthing new therapies, trailblazers guiding patients in bold directions. Progress is our prognosis. And two words inspire us, wage hope. We are change agents. We are tenacious and unshakable. Action is our middle name. We shape policy, mold opinion, and firm up funding. We are the squeaky wheels for a cause neglected far too long. We don't take no for an answer. Our message is loud and clear. Wage hope. We are an unstoppable movement, a force to be reckoned with. We are a volunteer army, a nationwide network, a purple tide of humanity. We are bound by an undying passion to save lives and rewrite the future. We will boost awareness, raise support, and lift up our voices in unison. Wage hope. We are allies. We are a sympathetic ear, a helping hand, and a caring heart. We are empowering and encouraging, a wellspring of knowledge and compassion. To patients and their families, we are a friend in their time of need. We will comfort them with a solemn assurance. You are not alone. We are on your side. And we vow never to surrender. We will issue the challenge, wage hope. We are the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. We are fighting a terrible disease. We will champion the promise of a brighter tomorrow. And this is our heartfelt battle cry, wage hope. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Kiro does have a proclamation that he would like to read on our behalf as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I think this is the third year in a row that we've, uh, th we've done this. We know that we've, we've lost a lot of valued members of the uh, community, uh, uh, including um, uh, Terry, uh, Terry's um, wife and uh, Ms. Galkowski and a number of others who are very near and dear to us. Um, this, I uh, hereby move the following proclamation. <clears throat> whereas, uh, whereas, November is Pancreatic, Can Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in the town of Arlington, and an estimated 46,420 people in 2014 will be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in the United States, and 39,590 will die from the disease. And whereas pancreatic cancer is one of the deadliest cancers, is currently the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the United States, and is projected to become the second by 2020, and whereas pancreatic cancer is the only major cancer with a five-year relative survival rate in the single digits at just 
And whereas when symptoms of pancreatic cancer present themselves, it is generally late stage, and 73% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first year of their diagnosis, uh, while 94% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first five years, and whereas approximately 920 deaths will occur in Massachusetts in 2014, and whereas the Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act was signed into law in 2013, which calls on the National Cancer Institute to develop a scientific framework or strategic plans for pancreatic cancer and other deadly cancers, which will help provide the strategic direction and guidance needed to make true progress against these diseases. And whereas it will be very difficult to leverage the opportunities that come out of the scientific framework developed as a result of the Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act, unless sustained and adequate funding is provided by the National Institutes of Health and National Cancer Institute, and whereas federal funding for medical research is critical to job protection and creation in Massachusetts, and whereas the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is the national organization serving the pancreatic cancer community in Arlington and nationwide through a comprehensive approach that includes public policy, research funding, patient services, and public awareness and education related to the developing effective treatments and a cure for pancreatic cancer. And whereas the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network and its affiliates in Arlington support those patients currently battling pancreatic cancer as, as well as those who have lost their lives to the disease and are committed to nothing less than a cure. And whereas the he good health and well-being of the residents of Arlington are enhanced as a direct result of increased awareness about pancreatic cancer and research into early detection causes and effective treatments. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Selectmen, designate the month of November 2014 as Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in Arlington. That's so moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five, nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you very much, and thank you for being with us and allowing us and the town of Arlington to join you in waging hope, and um, best of luck moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Chairman? Yes, yes. Mr. Greeley. Uh, and Joe did a beautiful job reading that proclamation, but what you did was even better. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We thank appreciate you. your continued support. Thanks. Of course. Have a great night. Um, moving on for approval, request Monogamy Grill and Tavern Late Night Event, November 28th, 2014, William Lyons. How's it going? Hey. Good. Good. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so this is the class of AHS 1989. It's their 25th, and they have asked for the extended hour for that event. Um, you know, as, it, as I mentioned in the letter, we'll keep the food going continuously, just like any other night. Um, should be a great event. A lot of great people from that year. That's really it. Thank you. Move approval, subjects, conditions are set forth. Second. Second. Ms. Mahan. One question, just want to make sure housekeeping-wise, um, we have your request. And then the line, it says 7 p.m., 1 a.m., November 29th, 20. 13, mm. I think you mean 2014, and then you say, please give us permission to remain open until 1 a.m. on November 28, 2014. I think that should say November 29, 2014. So with a friendly amendment. Yeah, um, the, well, there's, there's two letters. There's the one from last year. Oh, you. I did class of 1983, and I just changed the dates and submitted that. Oh, okay, so it's not. So the actual event is just the one remaining open until 1 a.m. Yeah, on 20th, the 28th. 24th. So forget about that 2013 letter. Yeah, that was last year's letter. Okay. All right. When I saw I that, just, I thought it was two requests. I just changed the dates on the letter. Yeah. Right. I'm just saying. Marion, you know what I'm saying, and you, we yeah, could fix yeah, it in sorry. the office. Okay. okay. I, you have the permission. It's just something housekeeping. All right. But Bill, you call last call at midnight, right, or something like the, you know, prior um, to 1 o'clock. Yeah. I think last year you guys asked me to start doing last call at 12, 1220 or whatever it was. Yeah. Okay. So won't be a problem. Thank you very much. Uh, is any further discussion on the board? Any discussion from the crowd? 
Seeing none. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. Say it, Bill. <coughs> Moving on. Consent agenda. Minutes of meeting. Uh, minutes of one meeting, the October 27, 2014. Reappointments to the Arlington Preservation Fund. Uh, Patrick Guthrie, who is a historical commission designee. Al Stevens, who is a designee of the Arlington Historical Society. And Clark Griffith, who is an architect with terms to expire on, uh, in September 2017. We have we request for free parking on 1129, 126, 1213, 1220, and 1227 for holiday shopping and the town support of First Lights. And we also have appointments of new election workers, Elizabeth Augustino, Laurie Foran, and Jane Radsvin. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion from the board on any of these items? Yes, Mr. Grayley. Uh, did anybody want to do a commercial about the free parking yeah. for the oh. holiday shopping or anything? <laughs> Jen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why I kept my mouth shut, Jen. It's <laughs> not really going to be a commercial. Um, so we're doing first heights again this year because it was so much fun last year. And this year we're actually going to kick it off with um, a tree lighting in the center, Friday night. We're going to have caroling and we're going to have um, the window decorating contest awards given out to the businesses that participated. And then Saturday, the trolley runs again up and down Mass Ave. And um, the stores will, ha the businesses will have specials either through the whole weekend or Friday, Saturday. They'll be posted on the chamber website. So just go to www.arlcc to see all the participating businesses. Um, and we're hoping for the free parking just to make it easier for people when they're shopping, when they have relatives in town um, on a Saturday, just to kind of um, not worry about the parking on a Saturday. Leland, did you want to say anything? Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I'm very pleased that this is being considered, especially for the full five Saturdays, because it is our busy uh, stretch at the Region Theater, and we have... The first one has our first sing-along and the last one has our last sing-alongs and those we have 10:30 a.m. shows and especially the sound of music is three and a half plus hours with all the components so since parking is limited to three hours it's really helpful um, for that, those particular events and also because there continues to be problems with the meters and this past Saturday morning we had a lot of um, new patrons and people who were frustrated by not being able to use the meters because they were broken. So this is a, this will be a welcome relief for a month or five weeks anyway. So thank you. Thanks, Leland. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Five nothing vote. Moving on. Appointment to the Arlington Cultural Council. Susan Lubar. Hi, Susie, I believe is what it says. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I have lived in town uh, mostly since 1990. Um, live in Richard Duffy's old house, <laughs> people like to think of it. Um, and I have served on a number of uh, volunteer positions in town and saw what good work the Cultural Council was doing and reached out to see if they needed any help and they seem to need help, so, so I step forward. Oh, well, thank you very much for that. Um, any questions from the board? Mr. Greeley. Move approval. Um, and what it exactly is involved with being a chili cook-off coordinator? <laughs> so the, the Bishop School um, PTO, it was a community building event. It's not a fundraiser. And people would enter um, chili and the community would come and vote. That would be cool. Uh, I was I voted the Bishop School and they had the uh, bake sale there on yep. election day. Yeah. Mr. Be willingness to serve. Mr. Greeley, I was actually a judge in that chili cook oh, It was fantastic, and that's why I'm proud to support this appointment. <laughs> <laughs> and do you like a very hot one, Joe? Or uh, uh, very hot, yeah. And beans or no beans? Oh, uh, anyway. Yeah. TMI. Sorry. We, Yes, Mr. Dunn. Just thank you very much for volunteering. 
Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Sorry. Thank you. We have uh, any discussion from the crowd? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank, Thank you very much. You. Next, the Poet Laureate Screening Committee. Town Manager Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so tonight, uh, in um, sort of a, in, in a alignment with the recently passed at last year's town meeting bylaw to create uh, or to name a poet laureate, trying to pull together the poet laureate screening committee, uh, and one of the designees is by the town manager with the advice and consent of the board of selectmen. Uh, so tonight, I am asking for the board's consent for the uh, appointment of Miss uh, Jane Howard to serve as uh, my designee on the poet laureate screening committee. Thank you very much. Jane, you want to come forward? I, I was asked by the town manager to do this screening, and I've done a little screening for other things for him in the past. So I think I'm one of five or six appointees. Five. Five. And so I'm looking forward to serving with that committee. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for all you do for the town. Um, do we have a motion? A so I move approval. Thank you. A second. And second. Thank you. Discussion, Mr. Greeley. Yes, uh, Jane. Really, you do so much for this town. Thank you for yet taking on another responsibility. What exactly are you looking for in a poet laureate, Jane? That's probably a good question. I'm going to punt a little on that, <laughs> uh, Mr. Greeley, in that I'd like to meet t with the other screening people and see what their ideas are as well and go back and read the, the uh, town meeting vote. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm looking for either, but I just, I, well, I think it's an interesting position, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Further discussion? No. Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Opposed? None. Moving on. Um, license permits. For approval, Mr. Wine Shop, change of hours. Eric Fayola. Um, do we have a motion? Move approval. Move approval. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? How's it going? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is the business good? This has been really good. And uh, actually, thanks to the uh, market basket closing down over the summertime, it just uh, stop and shop could just get hammered. Yeah. Mm. And uh, the, the overflow came into my store, so it made for a really good summer when everyone was telling me it was going to be a slow summer. So wow. it, it, good. Was, it was welcomed. Good for you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Glad it's all well. Any discussion from the crowd? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five nothing. Moving on, citizens open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open meeting was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Anyone here for a citizens open forum? Seeing none. Moving on, discussion and adoption. Um, the draft selectman's handbook, chapter five. As um, we did last week, I'd just like to open this up for discussion. Um. Yep, so uh, I'm presenting this to the board and asking for their approval, but I want to give people a chance to read through it and make any recommendations they would like. Uh, Steve and I have already reviewed it, although I don't know if you had anything different, Steve, today than we, our last meeting. No, I am um, quite happy with this as I... Uh, have been with the past work you've brought to us, Mr. Greeley. And so why, why don't I just go by section and then see if anybody wants to bring up anything. So for example, 5A, notice of meetings, anything? You know, do you, do you think don't need to do that? I'm, I think that what we've done in the past, or the past meetings is just, instead of going section by section, we just kind of air it out, air out any concerns and we move on from there. Um, so any, so let me, may, if I may, Dan or Joe, is there a section you want to, is there something coming up you want to give us a section or? I, I thought sure. it was, yeah, I thought it was excellent. Um, I think the only, the only thing I might ask is that um, on the very last section H, where you reference email communications, mm -hmm. that you reference that as electronic communications because certainly I think the same rules would apply, um, you know, be it email or group text or, um, 
you know, private message via, you know, social media or whatnot. So if that were changed to electronic communications, I think yeah. it would be more. I accept that, Mr. Chairman. Doug, any problems with that to no. you? Like, a so he changed age to electronic communications and reference that throughout. Yeah, but but I overall I think I think it's excellent. Um. Dan, yeah. So what is it the intent of this handbook to govern when um, the meeting materials become available to the public? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, it is, Dan. But it isn't actually specified in here, is it? Do you know what section we're in? I, so C4. I would C4. think of it as C4, and it says the official weekly agenda should be made available to the selectmen, the town manager, and town council on Thursday evening. But it doesn't actually, as I read it, try to specify when the public has it available. Right. And we, so and we're, we left that because we want your input. We, okay. we did not. But is that where it would go, Doug, in C4? So before, no, this is when we release the Novus agenda, am I correct, and materials related to it? Yeah, uh, this is really, to my recollection, uh, there are two separate time frames that are set forth here. Uh, Thursday <coughs> evening is when the Novus agenda goes live for the selectmen. Um, otherwise, as it says in the beginning of C4, regular meetings, the complete agenda shall be available to the public and the press. The selectmen's office no later than the Friday afternoon before the meeting date. It shall be posted on the town's website the same day. Um, and then the agenda is available to the town manager, town council, on and the selectmen on Thursday evening. Um, we can clarify that if you'd like um, further materials, rather than just the agenda, to be available before um, that, that you could also insert that into the Friday afternoon deadline, unless there's a different timeline that the board's considering. So there's a, this is a debate that we, ha that we as a board need to have, and, the and I don't know that we have to have it tonight, and if we want to have it tonight, let's do it. And if we want to have it later, I'm proud with having it later. But very specifically, the debate to me is, so there's the agenda, th that which is we are supposed to talk about. It's like the items um, that we're going to talk about. And that, by law, we have to put out Thursday uh, because that's the two days beforehand. Then there's the packet, which used to be delivered to us by physical delivery and now comes you know over the right. the, the internet and given that the pat and I so I'm specifically talking let me just about pause Dan <laughs> referencing the agenda and supporting materials to the agenda not the supplementary packet because as uh, you know we right. use, okay, yeah. just want so to be clear right, on that this, so let's even talk the about agenda the and materials there's agenda and there's materials. supporting materials and then there's supplementary stuff Okay. Supplementary stuff, I'm not, I don't think we're talking about it at all. Okay, yeah. I agree. Okay, I agree. so we've got in the agenda, the law is clear. Right. The supplementary materials, like, you know, for instance, this draft handbook, for instance, which right. was available to us on Thursday, I guess. Yeah. The question is, when should that be available to the public? To the public. And do we want to have that debate tonight or do we not? Yes, well, I, don't you see that in that line there? No, I don't actually, not exactly. So I, I get. Um, I guess I saw that, and maybe it wasn't explicitly, but I saw that in the Friday date is where I was anticipating it being. Okay. So well, that, that would have been, and then uh, my thought was that, so the board would be able to view, you know, begin yeah. viewing it on Thursday and then Friday, you know, you could field questions if need be. So, so I think we need to change the first sentence. To me, complete agenda includes materials. Okay. okay. But I think we, for your point, we need to clarify that. Yep. And okay. I am against letting it go on Friday. So I do want to have that debate. Oh, okay. So Even though that's what my... I'm against it on Friday, too, because I want it to be Thursday. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Miss, Miss Mahan. Oh. <laughs> I guess I could ask the chairman just his guidance yeah. on this. One of the things I would appreciate... Um, getting and I, I think it's sort of might be unfair to do it snap on the spot right now if um, the chairman and he may have already had this discussion gets sort of a, a census or, or an opinion from the selectman's office itself um, that the administrative staff if they have an opinion on um, what different release dates for the mm -hmm. um, packet of info material I mean I'd like to do that but I kind of don't want to put someone on the spot well, tonight so the, but I, it's I'll up to ask Marianne because they've okay. Marianne's been a part of this discussion yeah um, I, I, I personally feel in the office Friday is best. Um, there are times when we have reference material coming and we have to restitch as it's, as it's termed. 
and restart a process on Friday. We try not to do that, but it does happen. Um, so I think Friday is tidier. Uh, you know, bef we feel better when it goes out that way. No, oh. oh, sorry. No, and and what, what, what I would just say in, in support of that is I hate to put a goal out there where I mind myself know that there are times that, you know, I'd like to put something out that's attainable, recognizing extenuating circumstances. That's why I'd like to go with that. Okay. Yes, Mr. Dunn. So, um, I've, I really want people, I want people to be as informed as possible about what it is that we're going to be debating here on a Monday night. Mm -hmm. And that, and I definitely, th and there's two things that I think that are, are two practicalities that make it, to me, that make, give me a lot of flexibility. One is, that there is a certain amount of we don't like being caught, taken by surprise because it makes our jobs more difficult. And then there's the practicalities of what can and can't happen in the office. But other than that, if we can share it, I really would like it to be shared. The problem with Friday afternoon for me is that a, a lot of uh, town offices are closed on Friday afternoon. And if you're going to, if you want to, if you know, if you read something on the agenda and you want to hear something more about it, like maybe it's a right away hearing, like, or maybe it's something like that, and you want to talk to somebody in the DPW office or something like that, I want there to be a reasonable amount of run up for it. Because I mean, how many times do we get calls over the weekend, but we say, you know, I have to get back to, like, so that's why I want it as early as I reasonably can. And so, you, so you still, so that Thursday night is uh, is what you're leaning it, towards. So I, it, I would go with that, and and I guess I understand that the um, that the packet has to change sometimes on Friday, and I'm okay with it changing too. Like I'm just, you know, it is what it is. Like, uh, yeah, I like I like you know, information available to whoever is it's, it's public documents. Make them available when re, as soon as reasonably possible. Mm. No, I am. Um, so. I understand, mm -hmm. and I, that's not something I would support uh, myself. I think that the Friday uh, the Friday release with time to review over weekend and contact departments on Mondays before a meeting is um, sufficient for me, mm -hmm. um, and I think so. It, it's in the best interest of the office as well. But um, Mr. Curo, then Mr. Greeley. Just, just to clarify, though, when you say the Friday release, you're talking about all of the supporting materials as well. The, the, the packet, yes. The, the entire packet so the to the, pu the public the, release. Yes. Because I feel comfortable with that. I, I, do, I do agree with the spirit of, of being transparent and giving people the opportunity to, to, to read the materials and to approach us with questions, but I, I do recognize that the packet's not generally ready until, you know, in complete form until... Um, noon on Friday, and it is a short day. So I, I if we we're polling us, I would support a, a, a Friday noon release uh, to the public of the packet materials. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. And I would support Monday noon <coughs> for, for public uh, disbursement or whatever the right phrase is. I want us to get it Thursday night for us to do our preparation for the meeting. However, we're not asking the public to prepare for the meeting. We're asking the public for us to be, uh, 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 what's the word, see-through? Uh, transparent. Transparent. I'm not, I don't mean to say it like that. Word. I'm sorry. Uh, to be, for them to follow at the meeting if they want. I'm concerned about the work that's going to have to go to the staff where, uh, so people are going to get the pack, they're going to get the materials and they're going to say, whoa, 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 I want this material to go in before Monday night and now on, you know, uh, to our office. So I believe there's two different purposes for this packet. For us to prepare, yes, and the sooner we get that, the better. And I love getting out the agenda to the public. Uh, as uh, Dan, you, you pointed out, that has to be 7 p.m., is it, um, Thursday evening? Mm -hmm. That's fine with me, but all supporting materials and the rest of it, for transparency's sake, I think Monday noon is plenty of time for the Monday night meeting. That's just my opinion. Thank you. And just very briefly on that, because I don't want to set something in motion. I agree with the Novus agenda, what its purpose is for us as members of the Board of Selectmen and future members, as well as the original intent was so people at home or here could follow along. What I don't want to set into motion is um, somebody, if they got this on a Friday morning, Friday afternoon, to start calling Mike Rademacher or DPW. To start call the purpose of this agenda is to let the public know. Having the backup information was to let them follow along. I think, and the town manager can correct me, the correct way that we handle those items and those issues until Monday night is they contact the members of the Board of Selectmen, not individual department heads, not the payroll office, not 
you know, town council, we either know the answer or we say we need to get back to you. And then I don't call Mike Rademacher and I don't call Christine Bongiorno. I call the town, start with the town manager first. Sometimes I may say I think this is a Joe Conley question. So I think what we need to do is not make more. I just want to make sure people, if others agree, don't misconstrue what process we're in the air of transparency that we're promoting. So I don't envision that people get this Friday or Monday, which I'm for the Monday date, that they're going to stop picking up calling individual department head and employees. I mean, I know we can't do that because we could, I guess, if we forgot and it was a quick thing, like it's trash delayed. Can you tell me, you know, or Ted Fields, when's this meeting? But, you know, we follow the Town Manager Act. Uh, I just don't want to envision that people take this as a tool that they look at this and say, oh, good, I have all day Friday, all weekend to contact department heads, individual employees. That's not what it's for. It's really for them to follow along. Could I just add one more point? Yes, please. I want people to come to this meeting to discuss. I don't want to get nine emails on Monday. I read the packet, and here's my arguments against position number three of the page seven of the materials. I, 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 that's just my opinion. Come here and discuss. This is where the, we're, we're <coughs> meeting here for the meeting, but I have not moved Dan, not, not an inch, <laughs> not, not, not a, and Joe's with him, I think. <laughs> it's Steve. Can you work on Steve, Diane? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 I'm hearing we're a Thursday, Monday, and or Thursday, as Joe was saying, a Thursday, Friday, and Monday, and and so in the spirit of compromise, I I would think that going at Friday would be in the best option of the board, but I, I don't hear a motion either. So <laughs> Can we just ask Marianne? What, how do you feel about? In terms of, there's no additional work. Is I mean, right, no, Friday, it has Friday, to be done Friday, by Thursday. Thursday. Friday, 12 noon. Uh, us, I I do I would like clarification on one thing. Yes. And Diane, you did go through that, and that, that's a good uh, thought process. If materials arrive to us, uh, and we're trying to be electronic with this meeting on Monday, uh, you know, if we get 30 sheets, you want them on your desk, or do I say we'll hold them for board in? No, those, those will be held. Those, any information after that packet's formed and dispersed, nothing will go in it, is how I see it. And, and that's, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and we could put it in board info that, you know, towards the end, if that's what we want. Right. Yes. Can, yes, Mr. We'll just, uh, if, if you haven't seen this, Anybody who wants materials to go to this board, they have to be in by Wednesday noon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all of us. That's that's the public. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, Spencer, I, I'm curious. Do you have an opinion on this? I'm just as a reporter in terms of when you get materials before a meeting. I and mean, I think that's a different role. It's his job to inform the public. I understand, and I think he could be included in. Although I know I'm losing this vote, but mm -hmm. it looks like Friday. Do, noon. do you want to come to the microphone on this one, or you have no, no, no thoughts? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Excuse me, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, that's, that's uh, I'll second Joe's motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Four to one. That's what compromise is all about. <laughs> but I will, but we are going to vote on this whole document and I will support it where I, you know, but. Mr. Chairman? Yes. May I also suggest that uh, I think Mr. Dunn raised a separate issue that I can see where it might be a little bit confusing the way it's presently worded. Of course. That, uh, we would change the wording from for regular meetings the complete agenda i think like you mr chairman i read the complete agenda includes supporting materials but why not be more explicit about that does the board have any objection to saying for regular meetings the complete agenda with all supporting materials right shall be available to the public yeah we already that? yeah we already accepted that yeah. right that that sounds good to me That's right good. Okay. and then it goes on to say no later than noon friday not no later than the Friday afternoon, no later than noon Friday, right? That was the motion? Yep. Mm -hmm. Right, by noon Friday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, I definitely will, just to clarify, I mean, I clearly accept that sometimes circumstances are going to drive us past that, mm -hmm. and as long as we are striving to meet that. And it, right. And, yeah, it's a goal. Yeah. 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 Cool. No. Any, um, any further discussion on anything in Chapter 5 of the Draft Selectman's Handbook? Um, yes. Oh, were you done? I'm Do you sorry. need a motion on changing to electronic from email? No, I accept it. I, I, I accept. Okay. Uh, we already made that change. I just wasn't accepting this one, but <laughs> I am now because it's been voted by the board. Miss Mahan. Um, just one thing I want to note, and two, I want to 
ask about. Um, I like that we say on p page two, section C, we defined um, a process about getting agenda items on um, through the chair and the board of selectmen's office. I think that I know it helps in the selectmen's office um, for doing that. Now that I'm going to have to close this so I can get into my other comments. I'm sorry. Um, comments. Okay, on page five, under section section six, I can't talk. I'm tired. Would it be okay if we were defining where we talk about how speakers come before us? If we add, I think right now, and I, I'm having a hard time switching back and forth. It says groups or persons. Could we add employees in there? Uh, um, whereabouts are you? I, let me make sure I'm. If oh. the rules of citizens open forum is that correct, Ms. Yeah. Am I getting ahead of where we're going? Because this is where I can't go back. No, no, okay. it doesn't matter. Page five, mm -hmm. right. section six. I'm going to try to get into it. Okay. And All speakers will adhere to our commonly agreed upon standard of civility, specifically. There's a, a phrase in there. I'm going to try to find it. Uh, it says group personal. persons. It says group or persons or group and persons. I just like to add the word employees, just because we have had to remind speakers at the microphone. Person. I. Actually, about remarks. I'm trying to find it. Avoid, yeah, it has to be. Avoid personalities refraining, refraining from disparaging remarks about any person or group, and you'd like to add employee? Yes. Oh, that, that sounds or em fine to me. Okay. Where are you, Steve? Sorry. Uh, 6B. I'm sorry. Remarks I'm sorry. about six. any person. Oh, under, it's under E, but it's a different, it's the, it's there's the no E column. on the page. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So if we like e, is, e starts on page four and continues to page five. Five, but right. So somewhere we're talking on, about on page five. Yes. Second column six B. Avoid personalities refraining from disparaging remarks about any person, group, or employee. Oh, okay. That's, okay. That, 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 that sounds that. good. So, to no, me. that's fine. So objection to phrasing it as any person, including employees or group. Yeah. yeah. However, town council thinks is, is yeah, appropriate. Yeah, as long as that sediment's in there. And then that's my last one, which I had a conversation briefly with um, the town manager and town council, and um, this may be able to be rectified tonight. If not, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. And it's only happened three times since I've been on the board in 1999. I'm referring to page six, section F as in Frank, executive session, when we define executive session, when it will be held, so on and so forth. Um, I would put a query to town council. Again, it's only happened three times. One was on Sims. One was right after 9-11 and another one, um, I can't remember exactly when it was, where we were in the middle of a normally reg regularly scheduled selectmen's meeting. Um, of the three times that it happened, one time there what we were on a particular agenda item and town council said we need to stop talking in open session. I believe it was on Sims, I'm going by my memory. And then we went into executive session, came back out, and went back to the normal course meeting. The other two times I spoke with the town manager was after 9-11 and something else. So I queried to um, town council attorney Heim, if we need, if the language in there is um, enough so that we're saying we do it at the end of the meeting unless there's an emergency, but there is a third case scenario where we stray into whether we're on an agenda item or as in the other two cases, it, someone came up under citizens open forum. So. But if I may, Dan, I think that's, you know, under F, an executive session shall not be held unless the board has first convened an open session for which notice has been given. And a majority of the members must vote to go into executive session. So. There's no circumstance where we could go into executive session without having started with an open session. Okay. But so I think that applies. And I understand what you're saying, emergency conditions or we start to discuss something or I can remember a time when an employee came to the mic and we had to, you know, immediately go. I'm just saying I think it's covered is all. Council Lyon. Doug? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I believe what Ms. Mahan is speaking to is a circumstance in which the board has convened an open session. There is an unanticipated matter that comes up during the discussion of any given matter that right. would warrant entering an executive session that was not reasonably anticipated by the chair previously. Obviously, wherever possible, the board wants to make sure that in its agenda it sets forth that it will have an executive session and what that executive session purpose is. But I think what Ms. Mohan is speaking to is that there could be circumstances, certainly where we'd be having a discussion where something comes up right. that would be difficult to foresee um, and uh, it's either advised by council or a member of uh, the board that, hey, maybe we should go into executive session on this matter. And that is uh, possible under the open meeting law. It's just there's a fairly specific set of 
things that should be happening. Um, and so to address that concern, and maybe, well, I think that this current language would allow for that. Um, I think to address the concern more specifically, uh, what we could insert is something to the effect, and if the board will bear with me for a second, about halfway down uh, that paragraph, which is a longer paragraph, right after an executive session shall not be held unless the board has first convened an open session for which notice has been given. Mm -hmm. We could insert, however, nothing herein <coughs> shall restrict the board from entering executive session at any time for a lawful purpose not reasonably anticipated by the chair in advance of the meeting. That's, and I've had a longer discussion with Doug about this, so if, that, if that's okay with that, my colleagues, yeah, I just wanted to. That's fine with me. Okay. It's okay, I just don't, don't find it necessary, but if, if it'll make Diane happy, that's okay with me. Yeah, I mean, this say, the mover must specify in the open meeting the grounds of which nothing here says it has to be stated on the agenda. We're going into executive session. Uh, the I'm happy with that because it makes me happy. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That's all, that's all we need I'm, to hear. There, I'm Thank really, you. okay, sorry. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Uh, sorry, did, uh, Mrs. Mahan, did I cut you? Are you nope, done? Uh, that was it for me. Thank you very um, much. Do we want in under executive under executive session records? So the the last bullet point under F, do we want to specify the schedule for minutes review? Mm. 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 Um, that's tough because sometimes on certain issues, like with the Sims issue, but. So state law says Reasonably. that we, have to re we do have to review it periodically, and we can periodically review it and say, yep, it's still secret, um, which is... In still protected by executive session. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. and, but I th and so, I, I, yeah, how about I, this? I would like it to, if it said that, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, as such, the board should, uh, Doug, if this is okay with it, as such, the board should periodically review its executive session minutes within three meetings of the executive session. Is that comfortable, Dan? Uh, actually, so for this, I'm specifically seeking the periodicity because, for instance, things like the Sims one, where it stayed secret for many years, and we don't want to meet every three years, but the state law specifies that we reconsider every period that that stays that way. That's what I'm saying, though, yeah. every three, uh, within three meetings of when the executive session was, uh, what's the time you want to put in? Okay? Every three months. Every three months, okay, good. Good by me. Do you Is have any? Is that sound so lawful? We will have quarterly review of executive session minutes. Yeah. Is that appropriate, Doug? Okay. Am I? Uh, absolutely. The, okay. the time frame, whatever time frame you believe is, is, yeah. is feasible. I, I, can, I, can I add something to Mr. Dunn's? What Mr. Dunn is, is noting is, is that you would be reviewing executive, se it's kind of silly, but there, there, there's a weird endless cycle of reviewing executive session minutes. Um, technically speaking, well, I won't get into it, but the, the, there, there are going to be a lot of executive session minutes that will never have a good reason for being made public. I shouldn't say a lot. There will be a few that would never have a reason. For example, certain things with respect to a negotiation of a real estate uh, might be available to the public after that real estate has been disposed of because the purpose is trying to maintain confidentiality for getting a good price for real estate. Uh, but certain other things, um, like arguably like collective bargaining strategy, which may not be an issue for this board, but collective bargaining strategy, um, you typically wouldn't just allow a certain period of time to lapse because collective bargaining is always basically taking place and there's always going to be a certain amount of uh, bargaining uh, appropriate advantage that you can lose by releasing those minutes of the board's thoughts on collective bargaining in general. Um, but that, that three month review, you're basically going to have, you know, whatever executive session materials you've had within that period of time and you're probably going to be reviewing some of the same ones and saying, yep, those are still confidential and it may not take a lot of time, but unfortunately, as Ms. Mahana noted, you've got to go into executive session for that purpose. Yeah. Mr. Greeley, just so you know my motivation on this, it really is very much stemming from the Attorney General's decision a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, thank you. No, okay. no problem. Can I just ask an administrative question? We've been in trouble. Yes, we haven't please, Ms. Mahana. Time on that, um, if I could ask the Chairman and the Town Manager, for that particular function and feature, administratively, would you be willing, through Town Council, um, to sort of take, take on that responsibility in terms of somebody has a tickler file every three months since the town council is sort of the purveyor of executive session minutes that that's something he or someone from his office needs to keep on top of and, and communicate back to the board 
I'm I, trying to think of who's going to do this every three months. I, I think it needs to be done in coordination with the board staff, since the board staff's the keeper of the minutes. Okay, but but the town council. I think town council needs to play a role. Absolutely. Okay, so we'll let the selectman's office and town council. I just want to make sure. I'm just trying to think of who actually does this and if it doesn't get done. So now we have two offices that will be coordinating. I, I think this might be a little bit. I'm sorry. Go. Cool. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think this might be a little bit too much detail for the handbook, but what I would recommend is that if the Board of Selectmen's <coughs> Office uh, basically would keep track of, of minutes that are ripe for discussion, I would be happy to review them. In advance of the meeting, I would provide this board with a memo on my thoughts about which uh, items should remain confidential and which should not, and obviously it would still remain for the board, and that memo would be an attorney client privilege communication. And, and I guess what I'm asking is where our staff has so many other things that they have to keep track of and where it is a legal issue and I'd like to see the process and the town manager with the chairman can have more detailed discussion in the future but I think really I'm just thinking of everything that we do out there and we have to stay on top of and things like that just where it's executive session if someone out of the legal department could sort of be the person so I think it's appropriate how about with the chairman you all discuss no, I, I think it's completely appropriate for the town council to flip out every three months and mark a date and say I'm gonna prompt the board's Perfect. office to produce well how about each time we hold an executive session at that point we remind ourselves unfortunately well, we, the attorney we, we general does so not believe that is sufficient yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you I'm fine that's clarified thank you so much okay um, <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion on this chapter? Well, I, I just want to clarify, I just said the Board of Selectmen has been in trouble for this before. Not because we didn't keep executive session minutes. There had been no change. Like Sims had to go on for, yes. how many years did Sims go on oh. for? But we did not, in, in, a, in a timely manner, update. And so thank you for catching that, Dan. So Mr. Chairman, yes. based on all of the amendments which we have now added, I move that we accept section five of the selectman's handbook. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Town Chairman, Council. can I just confirm the, the, the changes that the board has proposed? Please. On page three, section C4, change shall read for regular meetings. The complete agenda with supporting material shall be available to the public and the press, the selectman's office, no later than noon Friday the meeting before the meeting date and shall be posted on the town's website. Yep. So it reflects the noon vote as well as clarification of supporting materials. In section E6, subsection B, this is under citizens' participation in board of selectmen meetings, citizens open the forum, shall read avoid personalities, refraining from disparaging marks about any person, including employees or group. Section F, executive session, basically insert language that clarifies that the board can enter the executive session for an unanticipated lawful purpose. And uh, also under section F, insert language to the effect of reviewing uh, executive session minutes every three months. And then finally, under section eight, Mr. Kuro's uh, proposed change is to change all references to email to electronic communications. That, that sounds right to me. Thank you for Thank indulging me in that. I just want to make sure I got them all. No, that, that's important. Thank you for all your work on this. Yes, Marianne. Um, just want to set some expectation on the public participation. Um, as of right now, I think possibly we've bought this program. I'm not quite sure. We yes, haven't we done have. this yes. with Adam yeah. um, Karofsky. Um, this wouldn't be the next meeting, all right, because there's a lot that there are several things we are in process of going to change. So I, I just don't want everybody to think on November on 24th, mm. boom, it, it's done. I'm not sure how the process is, but we certainly will work to do it as quickly as yeah. we can. But just to set an expectation for everyone. So that's fair. So perhaps uh, this vote will be contingent upon. Um, Novus being 100% up and running, and um, they have our full faith in doing the best we can. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. I just want to be sure everybody's, we have made one more change. I just want to, it is under Citizens Open Forum. We're going to ask people to sign in to speak at Citizens Open Forum, okay? Are people aware of that? 
That's okay. Oh, so when was that the side? Huh? Yeah, that's under. Uh, I didn't see the catch name. Page si page five, number one. Persons wishing to participate in citizens' open forum should <laughs> sign up to speak on an appropriate forum list prior to the commencement of the meeting, and will generally be recognized in order. So now. However, I mean, it's citizens open forum, as long as they, you know, they can, in my opinion, they could still come up to the microphone and speak, but they'd have to sign in at that point in time. We'd like to, as much as we could, have a list to help the chairman in advance have a sense of what kind of, you know, time this will take on the agenda. I was totally fine with the sign in. But Until I, I said having, it. No, actually, I'm still fine with it. It's the before the commencement of the meeting. It's the only thing that I'm hesitant on. So if we, like, if we do Citizens Open Forum, we get it to it at like 8.15. Yeah. If someone shows up at 7.45 right. and they sign up at 7.45, to me, I'm personally, I think we should. Well, I'm with you. Right. So, 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 so appropriate forum list. And like rather than just even, we may even just say, uh, just strike the time relation to it. So it's like yeah. on appropriate forum list. Blah, 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 and will generally be called, and so strike the prior to the commencement of the meeting. And then it's, it's still within the chair's purview. It's, I mean, the chair gets to call who the mm -hmm. chair thinks is appropriate. And if we put a list out front and then we bring it in just before we bring in, you know. And that's one less thing for the selectman's office to deal with that yeah. day. Okay. This, this is the way the, the, the school committee handles it too, and it works very well. So it's Which is what? Which is the sign issue. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The chair so. so when they come in, they sign in. People come in, but it's not. But like Dan says, it's not before the commencement. It's before the commencement of citizens' open forum, right. and then the chair has that list to read from and to call. But if we could, from now on, have a maybe a clipboard and a sign-up sheet out there, mm -hmm. and we start to inform the public when you come in, if you'd like to speak, it's that we're asking you to sign in just before citizens' open forum. Mariana, whoever, would go out and get that sign-up. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. I would suggest maybe the board consider changing the word, the me, or the words, the meeting to prior to the commencement of Citizens Open Forum. Yes, yes. that uh, takes okay. care of it. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a learning curve. Yep, first, course. Course. they'll say, "Have you signed in? If not, can you do it at the end of your remarks?" I think out of this language is good. Okay. But I think it's a good idea in terms of order that people wish to speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So now the vote. Was so changed. now, yeah. Any <laughs> any further comments before we take this vote? <laughs> Seeing none, and speak now or forever, hold your peace. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Five What's the goal, four. 99 chapters? Not, uh, <laughs> well, let's hope not. <laughs> so far, we've kept up with one of meetings. So. Yeah. Moving on, uh, discussion of future Board of Selections meetings for the months of January through April. Okay, and we will be doing two a month for so the ones that we have set forth. So in November, our next one is the 24th, right? And in this, I'm just checking, right? No, in December, our meetings are the 8th and the 22nd. Correct. Okay. So, and then how does January 12th? 26th. Sorry, January 12th. January, Sorry. January 12th, does what that work? Days might be the 19th. The 19th. Are we? Yeah, that's good. So the 12th and the 26th? Sounds good. Good by me. We may end up needing to do one on the 29th or the 5th, just because historically there's some, Before. but well, let's cross that bridge as we get there. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, Martin Luther King Day stays on the 15th, right? That doesn't... No, that doesn't the 19th. Change the no, it's the 19th. January 19th. Oh, it does change to the Monday then. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so that's January. February... 26th. Uh, that's the 9th and the 23rd? Yep, okay. works for me. Same thing in March. March, um, the 9th and the 23rd? Yep, good by me. 
The trouble is I don't know my business schedule. I know, this is all subject to. Right. Mm -hmm. Hang on just a second. Yep. Ninth and the 23rd. Yep. Ninth and 23rd. April. We just set the first one? Yes. Um, so it has to be. This. What did we set election day? April 5th? The 28th. But, uh, the 28th oh. is. That was in Peter. Is it only uh, the March. first? No, the 28th of March. So the next Monday after the 28th of March is. Where is? It is oh. the 6th. Is. I just have the 8th. I have April in front of me for some reason. Yeah. So election on March 28th, so the next Monday would be the 6th. No, it's March 30th. 30th. March yeah. 30th. Oh, March 30th. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So March 30th, is that right? So March 9 and March 30? Yes. And not the 23rd? Yeah, the 23rd. Okay. Yes, sorry about that. Um, well, then should we... My, as a practical matter, when are we going to be... Killing, hurting, I was really worried about uh, town meeting. So, so perhaps. Well, the meeting after the election, we have we have to have it's just a quick thing to not do chair and. Vice I chair. agree that there's absolutely. Oh, I thought you were saying not to have it on the third. Okay. I was con I was just concerned if we would only schedule two in March, whether or not we believed that that was possible. So, so do you? Would you like to look at? Want to keep the twenty third for now? We'll keep the meeting on the twenty third. That's um, not that makes as sense. The, Tie up any loose ends. Mm -hmm. I'm just, uh, I think so. I'm just trying to think through our calendar because if we, um, Marion, do you remember recall? So if, oh, town meeting starts April 27th, right? Yes. And so when will we want to put the selectman's report to print, roughly? Um, <laughs> hmm. We just did this. Pardon me, Mr. Two, Chairman, but no, please. Probably by the end of March. Or no? Yeah, you, yeah. You, you have to go, go back at least three weeks from town meeting. Okay, so we typically allow. I mean, we need the new selectmen to vote on that report. So it's clearly, we can't do it till March thirtieth, right? Mm -hmm. So okay, new or returning. You know what I mean? Like the the the, the selectmen who are seated on March thirtieth yes. need to vote on that report. Yes. Sorry. No. 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 It's the old board. It's it's. It would be this board, no matter if there's a change. Okay. Because you would have heard the hearings. Mm -hmm. Like the town oh, yeah. town meeting warrant, that's yeah. that's by whatever board exists right. before the okay. election. Okay. I thought you were saying we should keep the March 23rd, 2015 date because we may be right at the tail end of having having the warrant article hearings because somebody says I need more time. That's mm -hmm. going to be the yeah. drop-dead yeah. date yeah. Yeah. because it's about three and a half weeks before town meeting in terms of getting the warrant to print yeah. getting it out so so are you saying right now why don't we just keep 323 15 as a placeholder i think that's what i'm chairman? suggesting that i'm fine with that okay. okay you can always yeah i do too yeah okay so, uh so moved if we have to do that i don't know well we to, or did we just agree so what before? did we just do we made march 23rd and 30th meetings so the 9 23rd and 30. okay thank you um, April, the, I'm trying to think, that's the new board. We usually right? wait, yeah. yeah. That'll be. Okay. And any. The thing that April gets driven by town meeting anyway. Meeting so, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Moving on, correspondence received. Move receipt. Uh, move receipt. Um, I would. Second. We have a, and I, we have a motion. A second. I do just want to. Uh, comment on the resignation of Rich Turcock, uh, the co-chair of TAC. Um, this is a huge loss. Um, he really was a you know, great leader on this board. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, work with him pretty closely on one project and um, his passion always uh, shown through and as well as his commitment to the community. It was, uh, always very much concerned about community involvement and making sure everyone had uh, had their say and that's um, very important for this committee especially tech which uh, can get into some pretty um, passionate discussions with the community so I'm very grateful to uh, Rich and I um, believe that we'll be working on some uh, correct um, 
you know, form of recognizing a service to the town um, between now and the next meeting. And uh, other than that, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? New business. Marianne. No new business. No new business. Doug. No new business. Adam. I do not have any new business. There we go. Kevin. No new business other than uh, how's Rita doing? She's doing well. Thank you for asking. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. <laughs> no new business, sir. Thank you, Diane. Uh, just briefly, because you know I have to brag about this. Um, Arlington High Varsity Cheerleaders competed at the Middlesex League competition in Burlington High School last week. Um, proud to announce that the it used to be large and small, but they call it Liberty and Freedom now. Um, so uh, the Arlington High Varsity Cheerleaders are the Middlesex League Grand Champs Large slash Liberty Division um, and will be competing this Sunday up at Lowell um, for regionals, uh, which is we were very excited by that. It, I just want to say briefly, we were up at Burlington High School. We've become sort of the underdog of Middlesex <coughs> League. God bless you for a whole bunch of reasons. Usually they get up and say, okay, Middlesex League, and they say, Arlington second place, Woob in first place. This year this person got up and said, Middlesex League, Grand Champs, Arlington, and not a, not a pin, nobody said anything because you're waiting for the next thing. And then I looked to the person giving out the award, and that's when I, we leaned over to the team and like, you won. And so the whole place went nuts because <laughs> they're waiting for second place, you know, because it's usually Woburn. So very proud of uh, my thir our 13 girls and one boy. Um, and we will be going up to Lowell. And your Arlington Popwater A team, A squad, which are the older girls. And right now it's an all-girls squad. Um, also uh, competed at that their league competition are going to regionals this Saturday at Springfield. So. It's a Springfield Lowell weekend. I'm really very proud of them. Um, and uh, if we make it to national, both teams have a shot. And if they do, I'd be very proud. If they don't, I'm proud as, as far as they, they have gone because both are very competitive leagues. And then the only other thing to uh, piggyback on what Mr. Sullivan said, there have been just a few things that I had wanted to change, just typo procedurally on the Novus agenda, like correcting correspondence received. They didn't put, they spelled the word wrong. They didn't put new business on. But as Marianne stated, until we actually purchase the program, we can't make any changes to that. So um, not that anybody else has seen this, but of course it bugs me every time I see those few typos and can't add that one thing. But I will be patient along with all of us and make that change when we actually do purchase it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, one thing, uh, just before this meeting, the DAV disposition subcommittee met. Uh, so in this case, it was uh, Steve, myself, Adam, and Doug. And of course, two weeks ago, we had the hearing with all the feedback that came. And so what we came to um, recommend as a group is that we still think that sale makes sense in the long term, but there are intermediate uses that make sense in the, the for, in, in particular around economic development. You know, some of the arguments about co-working space make, made sense. And who knows, maybe it's possible for the co-working space to create a joint proposal with some of the other uh, spaces and suggestions that were being used there. So what we've asked the town manager to do is to come forward with a, a draft RFP for us to approve. There would be on something in the order of a six month with option to renew. And so we would be able to use it for say a year or some, or some period of time and also to keep going forward and asking town meeting for permi permission to sell, such that when we go to the town meeting in April, we'd, or, or we'd still say, please sell, uh, give us permission to sell the property, but we wouldn't be intending to immediately pull the trigger, and we'd instead do the interim um, uses and see if anyone could come forward with a strong RFP uh, that would help the town uh, economically. And um, we'll be, We'll be trying to get an agenda item on the next agenda okay. for, um, to discuss that uh, formally. But did you say, Dan, maybe for the open office or temp office for six months? I mean, so who the, would be interested in Yeah, something? the real, I think it would be, uh, it would be six months an opportunity. So let's talk about this because this is probably, yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right. But the intent wasn't that it would be six months and you're out. The intent would be that we, so we don't actually need the money for selling it until we actually kind of get closer to to, school uh, to, to building, which is a little, which means that there's a more flexible window. And if we say it is a one-year lease, it doesn't fit exactly. So how do we write an RFP that manages that flexibility? It, it makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah. There may be a better way of to, to describe the time period. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any further? No. Thank you. Mr. Kira. Thank you. Well, um, the chair and I um, attended the uh, public presentation of the um, uh, master plan, the draft master plan document, and uh, I just want to let um, everybody know that that is up on the website now and available for public comment through the uh, first week of uh, December, and that's, um, you know, it's very important. There was a, there was a lot in there. Um, it was actually relatively well attended, uh, yeah. better than I over, anticipated. Over, I believe, 30 people. Yeah, um, but uh, the, it is still open for public comment, and, and folks are encouraged to do that, and I think, as we discussed the last time, I think there's a lot of interplay between some of the ideas there and some of what, what uh, you just discussed. <coughs> so, and no, no further new business. Thank you. Um, I, I do have two quick things. Um, the first is uh, the Veterans Day Parade tomorrow in ceremony um, that follows. It kicks off at 1030 at the Walgreens in East Arlington and um, the ceremony takes place at the Central Fire Station Memorial. Um, it's a really, um, really nice event and it's certainly an important day. Um, so I hope everyone can attend um, or if you have time, please stop by. Um, secondly, um, I would like to wish the United States Marine Corps a happy 239th birthday today. I know, um, you know, quite a few um, friends of mine, um, particularly from Arlington, um, joined the Marines, and they care more about this birthday than their own. And uh, it's an important day for them. And I um, am happy to uh, join them in wishing them a happy birthday. And that being said, that's uh, no more new business. I will say my husband remembers that birthday better than mine. Move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. aye.